and this is The In Show. And I'm your host, Gus Summers. It's good to be back with you today. That's right, we got another great show. We are broadcasting live from the Sunset Strip in the entertainment capital of the world, Hollywood. And we have a wonderful in-studio guest, Miss Pepper J. How are you, Pepper J? Hi, Gus Summers. Thank you for uh, making the trip down. I know you're not too far from here. I uh, love that you were able to come on the show because you do so much. Yeah, you, um, you're an entrepreneur, you're a producer, uh, you, you uh, handle your own show. That's wonderful. And uh, Actors Entertainment. Right. One of our channels is Actors Entertainment, and it was wonderful having you as a guest on our Actors Eat chat show. I loved it. Oh, you know, it was wonderful. You know, it's a, I got to be on the other side of the sea, which doesn't happen very often. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's a different dynamic, isn't it, when you're on the other side? It is. I, I feel pretty comfortable in front of and behind the camera, as I'm sure you do, too. <laughs> well, mostly behind the camera. Uh-huh. I don't. I don't think anyone really wants to see me in front of the camera. Well, if they do, they should go to actorsentertainment.com and put Gus Summers in the search box, <laughs> and they'll see what you look like in front of the camera. That's right. That's right. Uh, this 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 young, dark-haired, clean-shaven person, right? Ooh. <laughs> that's right. You know, always tell me, uh, they always give me. Um, let's see, who I look like. Uh, of course, the most interesting man alive. I get that one. Okay. I get uh, Sam Elliott yes. a lot. Yes. And uh, Santa I, Claus. Santa Claus. <laughs> <laughs> Not too often. Occasionally. Oh, okay. uh-huh. uh, let's see who else. Uh, Sean Connery. You do look like Sean, although I've not well, seen him with that big of a beard. I have Yes, you have very handsome eyes. Oh. Good, good face structure. Wow, look at you. Thank you very much. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll leave it there. I'll end on that high note for myself. There you go. <laughs> but, you know, I do want to talk to you about, uh, first of all, how you got into the business. Because you, you do so much. There, you just aren't doing one particular thing. I know you mentioned to me that you also... Uh, have a special outing in Thanksgiving that you do. So <laughs> want to talk about that as well. But please tell me how, how you got involved in this crazy business we call Hollywood Entertainment. Yeah. Well, I was born in, born in Hollywood, first of all. So I've been here all my <laughs> life. Okay. And I had people in my family that were in the industry. I started officially when I was about six or seven in neighborhood plays. Oh. When I was seven or eight, I was on... Uh, Nine, ten. I was on several sitcoms. They were in black and white then. <laughs> uh, Fury, my friend Flicka, The Real McCoys, yeah. Sky King, those type of things. So I started rather early in front of the camera. Wow! Look at that. And how how was that? You enjoyed that? Or was it work? You know, at that age? No, no, no. It was all fun. And for me, it was all the same. Whether it was a play, a Thanksgiving play at the neighborhood park, yes, or it was at CBS Studios where they shot. Uh, the real McCoys at the corner of Fairfax and Third. It was really uh, all the same. We, we also did a lot of live shows. I played the accordion at that time and tap danced for different charities like the City of Hope. And it was just part of what we did. Yeah, yeah. And, and did you kind of go up through the uh, the studio process? You learned how to sing and dance, or was that something that uh, your family just naturally yeah. taught you? I, I took lessons. I okay. think I took lots of lessons on different things. I yeah. took a lot of dance, different kinds of dance, different instruments. Yeah. We had uh, we had acting coaches, right. particularly when we were going for auditions for bigger roles. Uh, you know, when I was a teen, mm-hmm. Mario Lomelli was uh, my coach for a lot many years. He passed now, but so yeah, it's you know being prepared and knowing your skills and your craft is part of what. The entertainment business is all about right did uh, how much of that uh, stuck through the years did you play uh, more instruments as you um, as you progress in your career or did you just kind of you know play practice a little bit here and there I don't play instruments I play yeah. at them <laughs> <laughs> you know and that's one of the things you mentioned I do a lot of things that's one of the things that sort of I lost I pick up the guitar once in a while sit at a piano once in a while I still look at my accordion but don't pick it up very often <laughs> but um, I enjoy it. It's me, myself, and the instrument yeah. mostly. Right. And uh, some of those instruments become the uh, the point of conversations. Oh, you play uh, accordion? Yeah, they do. Well, I do uh, <laughs> producing, and what a, one of the things I do is I produce music for other people. Right. And I've been told I have very good ears when it comes to hearing. You know, <laughs> like like pretty ears? Like no, different. not pretty ears. Just <laughs> you have a good, ear. good listening ear. <laughs> yeah. uh, arrangements, if they're starting to collide, you know. Right. Or, whether it's clean, you 
you can understand the vocals, that type of thing. You're right. Was that something that you picked up as you were studying music that you, you got to he, you know get an ear for it, or was it you know something that was just natural that you could just you know hear it? You know, music was always a part of my life. When I was mm. a little girl, we used to put on Perry Como and <laughs> Peggy nice. Lee records, nice. yeah. and 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 lip sync to them, and uh, put on little shows in the backyard. So that's right. uh, it's just always been part of my life. I think music is God's gift to man. Right, right. Are, are you also a vocalist? Would you consider yourself a singer? No, I am not a singer. I okay. teach. I teach performance skills okay. uh, to singers that want to record or that want to be on American Idol or that uh, you know just want to tour. Right. And then I work with a partner, John Michael Ferrari, who is a singer. Okay. He was my student a couple of decades ago. Okay. And together we team teach performance skills. And he actually, I may say to him, I need you to come in for this, that, and the other vocally. But I don't have the lungs anymore to um, to show the student what I need them to do anymore. Oh, yeah. okay. So, so you have a steady stream of uh, young talent that, that comes through uh, your studio learning how to solely sing. Do they also, do you teach them how to dance, play uh, music as well, read music? I uh, don't teach them how to dance. I uh, show them moves, and I teach them performance okay. moves okay. on the stage. I don't teach them uh, how to read music. I teach them more how to feel music, and I can recommend them to students. We audition once or twice a month for people that want to work with us right. on performance skills, whether it's singing, acting, attorneys that want to speak to judges or juries, anybody that needs it to be in front of an audience, really. Okay. And then we really only take about five or six students a year. Oh, I see. Yeah. Oh, fascinating. So so is it a, a year-long course or 10 months? It's whatever they need. Okay. You know, sometimes people come in just to uh, prepare for something for three or four weeks. Uh, other times people come in for two or three weeks every so often. Right. And a lot of times the veteran actors just come in for preparing for a particular audition. Oh, fascinating. Yeah, yeah you know, it, it, this, is, this is a great little uh, tangent. Uh, so a lot of people come in because of, of stage fright, learning to be on stage, mm -hmm. learning to develop their presence, or, you know, what's you depending know, on the person? I've been teaching since 73. I've never had a student that came in that was sta uh, stage struck. Right. Uh, Mostly, I try to take only students that are very serious about going all the way right. in their particular endeavor, okay. whether it's singer or comedian or actor, and I look at, uh, analyze where they're at, and I talk to them about their dreams and where they want to go, and if I feel that I can get them from where they're at to where they want to go, right. then I take them as a student. If not, there are plenty of vocal teachers everywhere and drama teachers, all the out of work actors are teachers now and there are plenty of people to good people to right. recommend them to. That right. just won't be me because my ego only wants to take people that can really go all the way. Okay. So so they're serious in, in their career. So they've already kind of started. They already know that this is what they want to do and they just want to sharpen yes. home their At skills. At some stage I, I have an eleven year old now that uh, has been on the stage maybe three or four times in okay. her life, uh, lead in Annie and different things. Okay. And so some of the younger kids, if they're 8, 9, 10, 11, right. they don't have that much experience because they just are right. barely here. Yes. But uh, the they there. come at different. Again, it, it's just the desire, yes. the want, and if they do what I tell them, then we're okay. Mm -hmm. then, then the skills get sharpened and That's honed. Right. And <laughs> That's right, exactly. Yeah, and, and they have the tools. You're basically preparing right. them so when I the moment comes. I them with the tools, yes. That's fantastic. <laughs> uh, and, and this was something that, that just naturally developed with your uh, career? Because you said it was back in 73 that you right. kind of started doing this? Well, in 73, I began teaching school for the Los Angeles Unified School District. Okay. And I taught school for LA Unified for about a decade. And then some other districts and some community colleges. Yes. And then in 83, I left public school and I started private teaching. That's when I started oh, I uh, just taking on students on a one-to-one -one basis. Right. I'm sure the dynamic's different from a structure. Did you also teach uh, uh, music and dance at school or was it normal subject? I taught performance skills, okay. whether it was drill team. That's the nice. girls that go on the field in yes. the middle of the halftime <laughs> with the chorus and the orchestra and the baton people yes. and I taught tap dancing and I also taught other things like uh, history, Spanish, okay. 
men's basketball. <laughs> 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 Whatever they needed at the yeah, moment. Right, understood. Yeah. That's great. So as yeah, obviously it was more liberating when you went on your own to be able to pick your own students and teach in your own manner? Was was there a structure when you were in the school district? Well, I always enjoyed teaching. Right. I, I think that if you give young people respect and you listen to them, then they will respond in kind. Right. It, it, as in anything, everything stops at, starts at the top. If it's a country, it's from the president down. Right. If from a school, it's the principal down. Right. If you have a good principal that allows the teacher uh, to be creative and mm. to really care about the students achieving and allows the student to understand that there are certain rules and respect and decorum that belong in a school. If you have a good principal, yeah. everything trickles down and it works well. Right. Yeah, exactly. Great, great point. Yeah, it starts from uh, the top down. Yeah. So, so when you, when you pick a student, uh, if we don't mind going on this, this is great. No, yeah, no, anything you want. Be because I know, uh, you know a lot of listeners like to find out the insights into Hollywood. Right. Yeah, because, you know, we bring on a lot of people on, and uh, this is perfect because you've been in the industry, you, you're still so, you know, uh, uh, vibrant in the industry, and you're helping others come in, so it, it's wonderful. So, you know, what are some of the pitfalls you see for some of these young people, if I may ask? Well, sometimes it can be their parents, people okay. pushing them into things that they don't really want. Right. On the other hand, if parents are supportive of what a child wants to do, those parents are the child's best asset. Yes. You know, they put time, energy, and money into schlepping and uh, bringing the child to where they need to be. And so parents can be the best or the worst. <laughs> uh, and, and I think that feeling that they have to be successful immediately right. uh, is a pitfall. Yeah. Not understanding that each profession, whether it's being a comic, a singer, or an actor, takes certain skills. Mostly yes. what I teach are audience psychology tools. Okay. Uh, why does an audience member want to keep listening to your record? Why does right. they want to, want to keep watching you when you're on stage or listening to you when you're, you know, you're speaking to them and you're part of the jury? You know? right. uh, there are certain tools, psychology tools, conscious and unconscious. And, right. and I think that uh, a talent that doesn't realize that they have to put in the preparation and really learn the skills and the elements of what it is that they want to do. Yes. You know, if you do that, then you're going to have a better chance of success. Oh, wonderful. So, so you not only just give them the physical tools to be able to sing, have presence, but you also give them some psychological tools right. to be amongst their peers and being amongst an audience and such. Right. Well, audience psychology tools uh, are very rarely taught. Right. And most people, that took me a lifetime to understand yeah. them and to put them together in uh, a book that's almost out. Hopefully it'll be out then couple of months here Wonderful. dynamic song performance skills which is really about those tools but for me that's the main thing people are missing I mean I may tweak their voice a little bit to make it better right. uh, to make them use the right type of position when they're singing uh, vocally whether it's mid voice or whatever right. but it's 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 a mind game okay yeah, yeah just just developing something yeah, excellent and you you were mentioning your book so and that should be out, hopefully, uh, the early part of 2014? I expect it to be out in spring. I okay. have an agent. I have uh, several Wonderful. publishers that are now interested. Wonderful. We've decided that if uh, one doesn't grab it by uh, mid-May, excuse me, mid-January, that we'll go ahead and self-publish. No, oh, beautiful. And uh, it took me 10 years to write it because it I just kept notes. Yeah, right. Because when a student comes in front of me, I have no idea what I'm going to teach them Yes. until they are there. I have to analyze where they are and where they want to go, and then I see what they need. Right. So in writing a book, it was very difficult because I didn't have a student in front of me. I just tried to think of everything I ever did for any student and try to put it down in some logical order, right. whether it's hand movement or nice. facial expression or right. vocal placement. And finally, it got together. I'm so excited. Yeah, that, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's wonderful. And, you know, eventually, I'm sure they'll be able to go to your, your website and uh, find out, uh, even if it's published or self-published, you'll right. be able to get links and uh, find it there. Am I correct? Well, I hope so. It's the Dynamic Song Performance. I'll put it on uh, our websites. And like I said, it depends on how it'll be published. Yeah. And 
if they want to contact me through Actors Reporter, ActorsReporter.com, there's a contact us. It doesn't go directly to me, but if they mm -hmm. put in the songbook, then we're keeping a list of those people that oh, want to know when it's out, and I think it'll be at Barnes and Noble and a couple other. Nice. Amazon.com. Right. Oh, wonderful. And if they wanted to get in touch with you in regards to your um, your teaching and such, same thing, Actors right, Report. Right, they can do that. Okay. Pepper at ActorsReporter.com. Pepper like salt and pepper at ActorsReporter.com. And then it's important in the subject matter to just put, you know, I'd like to audition for you or whatever, wonderful. wherever they are, because we take students in person and we take students via Skype. Now, uh, our students from Asia, we talk to them using WeChat. Uh, yes. know, the world's a small place these days. Yes, yes, it is. It is. <laughs> Pepper. Thank you for coming in. I got to take a quick commercial break. Uh, you know, appreciate all the wonderful insight. We still have two more segments Good. of your lovely wisdom of and um, wonderful pearls of wisdom. So thanks again. Appreciate it. Hey, well, this is Gus Summers, and you've been listening to the In Show. And we have in studio guest Miss Pepper J from Actors Entertainment Actors Report. And of course, we're going to have a lot more of her in our next segment. So you hang in there. We'll be right back. And this is the In Show. And I'm your host, Gus Summers. It's good to be back with you today. That's right. We are broadcasting live from the Sunset Strip in the entertainment capital of the world, Hollywood. And we have a wonderful in-studio guest, actors, reporter, Miss Pepper J in studio. Pepper, thank you. Hey, Gus. You've been in Hollywood. You know, your family has been in Hollywood for a while. You started when you were six years old, worked your way through your, your teen years, your 20s, and then you became a teacher. Or did you still yes. do uh, and some work in the entertainment business during that time? You know, it's interesting how things change your life. There was a TV show called Gidget. <laughs> yeah, Miss Sally Fields. Yes, and Sally was the lead. And they needed, I think, Laverne or LaRouche or something like that was her sidekick. And I auditioned for her. And they started with thousands and then hundreds and then the scores. And then all of a sudden there were two of us. And I didn't get the role. Uh -oh. And I was 15, and I was so devastated that I just never wanted to <laughs> act again as far as I could live. And I didn't. I, I really didn't do any acting at all until about six years later when I started teaching. And then I came back into it both for myself and then to teach other people. Wow. So was, was it just to be able to talk from experience? that you got back into it, or was there a, a, a yearning, a longing? I missed it. Did you? I missed it. I enjoy the stage. Yeah. I love, uh, you know, taking on a role. Right now I'm studying uh, 14 pages of a script that right. we're shooting. And I'm not shooting it. I'm just have a, I'm the role of a psychiatrist in Dallas in January. And it just, you know, to... I've never been a psychiatrist before, so I get to get talk to my friend who is one, and how you talk, and how what it's like, and you know, I just enjoy it. It's fun. It's like yeah. a, it's like an adult game. It, right. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's a great way to look at it. You know, you know it's funny because uh, I'm, I'm a movie guy. I enjoy movies. You know, always enjoyed cinema since I was young, and no actors. And you know, some friends of mine we would play this game. We would pick two different actors randomly okay. and then try to connect them with other actors that they've been in with different movies so and so was with this person and this you know kind of All a right. degree game okay. but you know since then I've always looked at acting through a lens of what can I learn from the craft from this actor the way oh, they lovely. do oh, and, and how this movie is made and how this right. director did this so I, I'm curious you know from your standpoint because you're on both sides Right. in front of the camera and then you're also an observer do you do you observe cinema in that fashion are you able to but since because you've been behind the camera mm -hmm. or do you are you able to do you need to know the craft to understand the craft or are you able to you know kind of pick points you know oh, i see the way michael Tain, uh, michael kane did this oh i see how meryl streep did this. oh this is fascinating and i see how you know john ford did this in this big you know cinema are you able to analyze movies that way so much so that people with me go, shh, Pepper, <laughs> quiet. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. You know, I, I, and also, it's important to not only learn from them, but when you're auditioning, 
to watch what you're auditioning for because nice. each show, nice. each director, whether if it's a film, each show, if it's a television show, has its own pace, has its own color, right. has its own s timing yeah. uh, and sense of being. Uh, if you were auditioning for The Office, for example, which uses a lot of improv and different things, right. w it would be much different if it was a nighttime drama like Blue Bloods or something. Yes, right. And, and particularly the timing. Also, how much movement. Uh, nice. It, and so I tell my students to really take a look and watch and study for that which they're auditioning for. And I'm always learning. I, I particularly like, oh, don't you just love the music? And somebody goes, shh, Pepper. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that string line. Pepper, be quiet. <laughs> I'm hard to watch movies with, you know. Understand, understand. Because, you, know, because I, oh, you know, you read different stories. Like I remember I read about uh, Back to the Future mm -hmm. and how Eric Stoltz actually had the role for Marty McFly. And I think there were already six, eight weeks into filming, and uh, the director came in and said, "You know what? I think Not we running. need we need to go in a different direction." Right. Michael J. Fox. Right. And you know, explaining about tone and color right. and tempo, because Eric Stoltz is a brilliant actor. Right. Matt, and sometimes Matt. it's also the reaction or the interaction between two. The leads and such. That's right. Yes. Two actors on s the stage and things like that. Either one would have made great. Michael J. Fox, of course, was phenomenal. <laughs> <laughs> he was, it, it, you know, he's, you know, he's brilliant. As I remember a lot of those things, because you know, I'll, I'll look at compare and contrast. Oh, that's interesting. And then just personally, I'll say, you know, I wonder if there was someone else who could have fit that role. Right. You know, for instance, one of my favorite movies is um, I, From Here to Eternity. Yes. Wonderful. And, you know, you see Burt Lancaster right. and Ernest Borgna. And, and I try to think, is there anyone that could have fit, fit that, yeah. that role? Because, you know, they're brilliant actors you right. know, that could do a lot but of things. But it would things. not have been the same role, uh, would it? Uh, right. Well, you bring so much of yourself to a role that it really changes the dynamics. I think that's why we enjoy remakes, <laughs> is because it brings a different dynamic to the role. Uh, Sabrina comes to mind. As a okay, with Harrison Ford? Uh, yes, yes. I, that was the remake. Right. And you know, I just, you feel it's a good script. Yes. It's just fun to see the different actors take on, on how it is. And the director, the director yes. changes it quite a bit too. Right. Because I remember there was a remake with um, William Devane, Stephen Railsback, uh, of From Here to Eternity. Yes. And. I'm a big William Defane fan, and uh, he's a great, I, great I, actor. Yeah, brilliant, and mm -hmm. watching it, I, go, I liked it. This, this is mm -hmm. good. This, okay. this is great. Steve Rills right. back, you know, w was wonderful in it. I think it was uh, Peter Boyle who played uh, Ernest Borgnine. Isn't right? he amazing? <laughs> you know, Young Frankenstein. Oh, Young Frankenstein. Oh, what, a, what a good an actor. Oh, fantastic! There was a movie called Dream Team. You remember? It was Michael Keaton, Christopher Lloyd. Yes. Uh, they, they, I think they I escaped. Do remember yeah, that. Uh, Lorraine Bracco was her hair was short and dark, and then, oh, I see. and uh, but it was you know he's a you know so many great actors. Right. Sorry we digress. I mean no, uh, <laughs> I, I'm not as hot on <laughs> trivia as you are. I I have a hard time when someone says the name of somebody. It sounds familiar if I haven't met them personally. Right, which, I have a which lot I'm of them. sure you have. Yeah. Yes, but then I have to go to IMDb, the Internet Movie Database. Right. And go, oh yes, I like that person. <laughs> right. Because a lot of the working actors, you don't know their names. Yes. You just know their roles. Right. Yeah. You, know. you know that's and that was something, for me, just uh, you know, c cinemaphile, uh, enjoyed the character actors. Right. And one of my favorite, F. Murray Abraham. Yes. Oh. Phenomenal. What can he not do? <laughs> that's right. That's right. Exactly. You know, when you when you see when you start seeing them and who are they? And then that's right. when you well, actually, all this leads to again, kind of my original question: Is uh, an actor able to glean from those great actors just from their acting ability on the screen? Right. You, you, you think they're, they're able to do that, or do you think they need to well, think, then develop yeah, it? You, you know. know, Tony Robbins, Anthony Robbins, is yeah. an author that I've learned a lot from, right. both in my life and in my teaching. Yeah. And one of the things that Tony would say is, find someone that does what you want to do, who does it well. Nice. And f either mimic them or take the, so what are they doing? You right. know, if you want to be a director of whatever nice what what director do you think does what you'd like to do and 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 try to follow or mimic some of those things so i say yes absolutely matter of fact to the extent that 
we'll take scenes when we do our workshops once in a while yeah. and we'll do it then we'll watch the actors originally doing it and then we'll kind of play with it a little bit learning from other people doing things and wow. it's usually now that we have such close up shots yes. less is more you know? it, right it's right. all subtle yeah, yes yes it's uh, it reminds me with the uh, oh, we're talking about you know stealing a scene uh, Christopher Reeve uh, had read that when he uh, trying for, when he was doing Superman, Clark yes. Kent, he goes, they asked him about, you know, how he got into, you know, what kind of style. He goes, uh, it's just Cary Grant from uh, Bringing a Baby. <laughs> right, right, right. No, it's, it's, a, it's a John Wayne stance <laughs> yeah. with a little bit of, you know, somebody else uh, throwing in. You know what, that's what it's about. Take from people that do it well and, and bring your own slice of life to it. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. great. Uh, bringing up Baby. I won't get me started on that one. That's uh, another brilliant one. Uh, great actors in that. Uh, you know, com coming from uh, your history in Hollywood, at, at this point now, you've been back in it since the mid-80s? Yes. And, uh, uh, 70s, yes. Okay. And you've been uh, now doing your, your talk show. You work with uh, actors and uh, entertainers, basically. Right. And what has changed since you've been, because you taught from 73 to 83. Yes. Okay. And from 83 on, you kind of went private with your teaching right and we opened up our production company at that time open up your production yes, company and okay uh, my partner joined me in 1990 or 94 something like that early 90s John Michael Ferrari okay. and uh, so mostly what we do is we do projects for other people okay it's making you I make things music videos yes. you know TV shows independent films doesn't matter and then we have our own network uh, which is the Actors Podcast Network, which you're referring to. It has three channels. Yes. A trade magazine called Actors Reporter. It has the daily uh, entertainment news and, inter you know, interviews and different shows on it. Right. And the Actors Entertainment Channel, which is the one that you were on. You were on the Actors eChat show, which is one of ten shows on the Actors Entertainment Channel. Yes. And then we have the Actors Radio. And much of that goes on the Internet and goes on cable. And I say it changes so fast, Gus Summers, that it makes my head spin, <laughs> you know, from, oh, Facebook, I think I get it. <laughs> no, I don't get it anymore. And what is this? Vine. Okay, there's Vine. And this is Instagram. And lucky for me, I have great crews, and most of them are under 30. <laughs> so they keep me, they, they, I have to have my brain somewhere between a 14-year-old and a 24-year-old at all times. <laughs> Nice, nice. Because I was going to say, you know, if, if you just watch culture, you know, if, you, if you're taking time just to watch how vastly different 80s, 90s, and then the jump, you know, when we approach the millennium, not just because we broached it, but it seemed like there was a massive culture shift, technology shift, right. you know, and from, you know, the 2000s, even to now, right. you know, these past 13, 14 years. It's even vastly different. Exponentially, even, yes. You know, and, you know, from basically the millennium, because I know 80s and 90s, forget it. It's like if you're stuck back there, <laughs> you're stuck behind like this wall. Right. You know, in 2000, it's, again, it's more of a leap. You're kind of behind, but it's right. been a leap. What have you seen changed from Access. You know, to Access, nice. Access is important. Uh, my father is 95 years old. He was in World War II. And what he loves is having an idea or a question and then looking it up on the internet <laughs> i mean for him yeah, right. the whole world is there it's yeah. just extraordinary so not only information the access to information but the access to making things yes. when i started uh in the production company then i directed editing on avid it was in a room larger than this room here which is a nice size studio that you have uh, and huge equipment you know now you can edit on a home computer with Final Cut Pro yes or even now the premiere the new premiere has come around to people are using it so you know for 500 to a thousand dollars you can literally make movies I was mentioning to you Dennis Charles is an actor that's been around for a long time also does voices for a lot of uh, animations and commercials yes. he was our guest on our actors he chat show yesterday he was talking about doing a whole movie on the iPad. Yes. What lights did you use? Natural lighting. Yes. Well, what audio did you use? I used the iPad, and uh, I had an, a little zoom next to it. What actors did you use? All well-known actors, whether it's uh, Ed Bagley or whatever. <laughs> and it was like, 
And someone said, well, how do you zoom? And he said, well, I took it and I moved the computer closer <laughs> or further <laughs> apart. Yeah. And I was like, okay. And yes. I looked at it. Yes. It was nice quality. Yes. Yes. And he was not sure if it would outlast a large screen. You know, if right. it would become too pixelated. But it turns out it's going to work just fine. Yeah, that, that's yeah. funny. Yeah. So things are changing so fast. I just love it. Don't get me married to anything you're doing today. Just oh. be open to learning and growing. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And then, you know, along those same lines, uh, access, then you get an access to an audience, which was only available to, right. you know, larger corporations or larger entities. Right. Now you can develop your own audience. You can put on your own little, right. you know, channel or whatever, and, right. and eventually they'll come knocking. Well, you know, we are, you talked about our actor, Actors E chat show. Uh, it's now ro about five and a half million viewers. Nice. Some of the kids on their YouTube, yes, it takes them a week to get five million viewers. <laughs> you <right>. know, <laughs> so it you know, depends on your perspective. You know, yes. But uh, yes, you're right. Our shows are international. Even when we go live, we go live with the Actors' Z Monday through Friday at ten in the morning. Most people are watching it first time around at night time. Yes. Ten right. at night, eleven at night, midnight, depending on where in the world they are. Yeah, fantastic. And it's, it's, it's so fascinating, isn't it? Isn't it? And it's now, wonderful. Now <laughs> you know, hi, this is a chatter from Barcelona. Hi, welcome to Barcelona. <laughs> yeah, you, you, yeah, you follow your matrix and everything. Hey, I'm I'm popular in uh, France and Germany right, and right. England and and and, and uh, Russia and well, so. Well, hey. anytime a, a guest comes on that comes from Brisbane, Australia, or yeah. from some Singapore, then yeah. of course they show their appearance to their family and friends, and then our audience grows in that area. Uh, of the that's world. fantastic. Fantastic, fantastic. Pepper, again, i got to take a quick commercial. Thanks okay. for coming in. we still got one more segment, so we've got plenty of time to cover more stuff. Hey, well, this is Gus Summers, and you've been listening to The In Show. We have in-studio guest, Miss Pepper J from The Actors Reporter, and we're going to have a lot more of her in our next segment. So you hang in there. We'll be right back. And this is The Intro, and I'm your host, Gus Summer. It's good to be back with you today. That's right. We have actors, reporter, in studio, Miss Pepper J. Pepper, do want to give you an opportunity to please, again, uh, mention your websites, any upcoming information, anything that uh, you'd like the listeners to know about. Well, I encourage people to go to actorsreporter.com. You'll see right now the uh, interview of Dave Fenoy, F-E-N-N-O-Y. Sometimes called the Dread Man, called, sometimes called the Voice of Hulu. He's the one that that speaks for Hulu. He's also on The Walking Dead. He plays Everett on The Walking Dead. Nice. It was a great in-house uh, at his home studio. We did a nice interview of him, and we have interviews there. We have uh, my favorite show of all the shows is Actors <laughs> Day in L.A., where mm -hmm. we follow an actor doing things, okay. whether it's reading to kids in school or at nice. Aspen doing a stage reading of a of a script that he wants to have into a movie Danny Nucci on the set of the Sinatra Club where we were speaking at lunch on their set to the director and the writer and uh, you know Danny and different people nice. so whatever they're doing we just sort of follow actors doing things it's sort of like a real nice inside peek into the industry wow. and um, we do red carpets there yes we have weekly news and we have a weekly comic we have several columns of magical motivation with right. empowerment coach Jamie Kalman, party planning tips by Party Charlie, and different <laughs> things. And then nice. the Actors Entertainment, you can reach that through Actors Reporter also, or actorsentertainment.com. We have a lot of entertainment shows, Acting in Style, where we focus on, I think Aaron O'Connell is a designer that's up last on that. Uh, we focus on uh, Model's Best Friend is another show. For photographers and models, side beat music, musicians, composers, whether it's composers for music for video games or mm -hmm. the Philharmonic, you know. Right. So we have a lot of different shows. Actors Eat Chat is one of those shows. Tinsel on the Town is is a popular one. We take a crew to your party. And okay. you hire us <laughs> to interview you and your guests, and we put it together in a video. Oh, Some nice. people want it on the Internet, so we put it on uh, tinselonthetown.com or wow. on the Actors Entertainment Look site. And some people just want it for their friends and family. Yeah, yeah. So we have motivational chat. We have seven. This DVD show, this DVD interviews rock stars in all different types of, uh, he just finished interview, all different types of industries. Like he just interviewed Hollywood Hot Rod magazine owner uh, Todd Ladd. 
nice. comics. Uh, Dwayne Perkins, I think, is up there now. So it's fun. And then we have Actors Radio. I'm trying to get you on to the, our Actors Radio. Y- you are? Yes, I will talk about that. Right. Okay. I think the end show would be great, linking out to that from Actors Radio. Oh, wow. We have Filmmaker's Corner with Roxy She, S-H-I-H, yeah. who interviews different directors and cinematographers. So that's our network. It's called the Actors Podcast Network, and you can reach almost everything through actorsreporter.com. Oh, wonderful. Wow. Look at all that. And, and, and again, talking about uh, being accessible. Yes. You know, people can just go and have this treasure trove, right. you know, of, of basically your life experience and your life. Yes. You know, bringing it all up. Well, I have a great team. Not, no one does anything by themselves. <laughs> Absolutely. And one of my favorite things on Actors Reporter is that it has the daily entertainment news all in one place, where they just link out to you know oh. seven or eight yeah. of the what's happening, and I like that too. Wow, that's 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 wonderful. Wow, you know, you know, you know what what do you say when uh, you have so much going on? You know, that that's wonderful. Yeah. You know, that's about I have a great team. <laughs> you know, you know, do we got a, we got a few more minutes left? You know, do want to talk about? I know we've talked about, you know, your life and the things that you do. I'd like to talk about you a little bit, to get okay. a little insight in you. I know you you love uh, film, you love cinema. Yes, you, you, you I take, like making things. You like making things. And I like being <laughs> in them. <laughs> <laughs> the biggest part, right? Yeah, sure. <laughs> I love acting. It's fabulous. Do, do you personal time? Uh, jog, read, write. Well, I'm a grandmother. Okay. They call me Bubby. I have a wow. five and a six year old Hudson, named after the Hudson River in New York. <laughs> and Keaton, her name is after Buster Keaton. They're okay. Five and six, they're delightful to have in my life. I enjoy gardening. Nice. I enjoy my, I have a new rescue. Yes. She's a wolfhound terrier that's a pain okay. in the beep. <laughs> did did I meet did I meet her that day I was there? Jasmine? No, no, no. You was that after? Okay. You met RJ, who was fourteen and a half, and we had to put her to sleep. Oh. That was very sad. Yeah, yeah. Was that yeah. the the brown one? Was that yes, the? Okay, yes. Yeah. She was uh, she was a shepherd Sharpe. So when she was standing up, she was smooth, and when she was sitting down, she was all folded. Okay. <laughs> so that was kind of an interesting. She didn't know what she was. Right. And I enjoy people. I enjoy walking and conversing. Uh, frankly, Gus. I just appreciate waking up in the morning. When I wake nice. up, the first thing I do is I feel myself smile and say, thank you, God, for another day. <laughs> you know, hopefully I'll be worthy of it. You know. Right. Yeah. You know, that, you know, what, what, you know, what, you know, a great outlook, you know, period. You know, sometimes you'll wake up in the morning and it's just like, ah, oh, you know, I got to do this today. I got to, you know, I got to meet this deadline. I got to edit this. I got to do that. I got to go meet mm-hmm. so-and-so. And it's like, you stop, you go. I'm glad I should. I can add it there, and I'm going to go meet so and so. That's right. That's right. When I was a little girl, I complained, and my mother, my grandmother says, "Come with me." We went to Children's Hospital, and she walked me through the ward. Wow. And I came out, and I said, "Okay, I'm done complaining." Wow! Wow! Yeah. It's all a matter of perspective. A perspective. Yeah. Nice. Absolutely. And if you're not doing so well in your life, starting to appreciate little things will really make a difference in your day. Yeah. Smile at people. Smile. Just, just <laughs> smile. Whether you feel it or not, appreciate how amazing a flower looks. Yeah. I mean, there are so many things that are available to us yeah. to appreciate. Yes, we have to focus on things that are not going so right so we can fix them, change nice. ourselves, grow. Nice. But appreciation, I think, is the key to happiness. Nice. Absolutely. absolutely. Be careful who you surround yourself with. Yes, absolutely. That's I <laughs> <laughs> keep a ward off that negativity or what have you. Mm-hmm. You know what? You know, I want to ask you about um, just Hollywood in general. I'll kind of save the question for the last. All right. um, the the culture, you know, it's changed a lot. It, it has and it hasn't. How, how, from your perspective, being in the industry right. uh, for uh, for as long as you've been. Uh, you know, we talked about kind of that the millennial bridge, that gap. How's the culture change in your perspective? Right. Uh, you know, for a young person coming in at 18, 19, you know, the rise, you know, wide open, right. you know, tinsel town, you know, the streets are paved with gold and what have you. And then they're hit with really the reality, which is auditioning, practicing, right. you know, getting to your appointments and, you know, blah, yes. blah, blah. You know, that, that is... Uh, you know, that's the reality, and eventually that sinks in. You know, they know that naturally. Right. But they have to be in Hollywood to understand the culture of Hollywood. You know, has that yes. culture changed? I would say yes. I would remember that how you do anything is how you do everything. 
Nice. Uh, the guy Jay on food on food on foot who collects food for people on Hollywood Boulevard. They're homeless. I got that from him and Eric Shaw from All Cities Resource Group. The way you do anything is the way you do everything. So if you're showing up late, people are going to think, okay, that's what you do. Yeah. Right. Uh, so make what you do count. Nice. Be responsible. That's important. Now, one of the things that has changed is, for example, voiceover actors. <laughs> if you know, you're a voice in a commercial or in a cartoon or s something, before you would have to go into a studio to, l studio to lay down your audition. Right. Now you have home studios where you just go in your dining room, right. you, know, you record <laughs> yourself and you turn yourself in. I think that's true. I think there are more opportunities today than ever. With the independent films, yes. with the web series, with student films, right. uh, whatever city you're in, wherever you're listening to your show from, yes. there are things in your neighborhood that you can get involved with. If you're a kid, put on ba backyard plays or find out with your school. Yes. I know that my son was six in elementary school and he joined the high school play as a kid. Matter of fact, he was eight and John Houseman, the director, was directing him at University of Southern California wow. in uh, Caucasian Chalk Circle. So nice. there are opportunities in your neighborhood, either at the university, the college, mm -hmm. the playground. You know, there are opportunities online, but be careful. You know, yeah. make sure your parents are, are yeah, around where? and looking at what you're doing also. Right. I would say never be alone. No. Never be alone. It can be a dangerous industry. Right. You know, you can be in a room with 40 people and someone will say to you, oh, here, I want to show you something. And it only takes you walking through that door and you're in trouble. Right. And your answer is, oh, I'd love to. Hold on a minute. Let me get my mom. Or just a minute. My friend's with me. She'll come with me and we'll go and see what you, what you have. So I think I'd be aware but be open, learn yes. your craft, and there are opportunities. The independent world is really uh, churning out some nice stuff. Yes, really, and, and kind of it gives you that, uh, that chance to build your resume, get some right. experience under right. your belt. Right. And if you're 14 years old or 17 years old, start making your own films. Get your phone out, get your iPad <laughs> out, buy a little <laughs> camera, just start making it happen. You know, I've seen there's a skateboard movie that I think a 12-year-old did on YouTube. Right. It is extraordinary. Right. All he did is went and go around to different state skateboard parks, film a little bit, interviewed some people. Yes. You know, it's out there. Right. You know. That opportunity. Remember how Steven Spielberg started? <laughs> he snuck onto the lot at Paramount, found a trailer that no one was using, went to the stationery store and bought his little name flag, put it on there, and everybody thought he bull was belonging. <laughs> he was there for a long <laughs> time before people realized he was trespassing. <laughs> you know, you know I, I, I never did find out what happened after that. Do you remember that they escorted him out? I, uh, you know, all I know is he's now Steven Spielberg. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Which is what I concluded as well. Yeah, that's exactly right. That's exactly right. That's, that's, you know, that's a great story where, you know, where you have all these pitfalls and be sure you, you have all these warning signs. Then you have stories like that right. that where you can you know push a little bit right. now, i don't suggest that you trust you, you trust <laughs> especially right. nowadays but i do suggest <laughs> that you you take advantage of what you want to do yeah you you take your dream and you make it real right. and it doesn't matter how large or small you don't need money just grab your friends write your script and i suggest being an intern nice. an apprentice okay you know our, our government the united states government is trying to do away with apprentice and yes. In terms now, that's not a good thing. Right. You know, write your congressman. Yeah, yes. You know, because y if you want to be a mechanic, find a mechanic in your neighborhood and say, can I clean up and sweep and yeah. hang around? You know, you want to be a lawyer, can I come into your office after school and, and file? Right. Just be around the people that you want to, you know, be. Yeah, you bet. And, and in turn, you know, you know, at the bottom, come in at the mailroom level, as they used to say. <laughs> right. And, and, right. And I, I really encourage that and really try to prevent the government from stopping all these opportunities that we have now. Yeah, because that is beautiful. Because you know, uh, there is a point where you do learn by osmosis. You know, oh, you, definitely. You, know, it, it, you absorb it well, just it by being in the environment. Uh, how lawyers became lawyers. Yeah, exactly. You just you know, yeah. It's interning with other lawyers, sure. Yeah. That's well, right. one of the famous one, Abraham Lincoln. You know. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. You know, look what, you know, you, he studied and so on and so that's forth. Right. You know, that's a, that's a great point because that's exactly what can happen here in the industry. Right. You can become an intern and, right. uh, you know, you do the work. That's and, right. you know, I've read where people have complained, uh, you know, I do so much work. And I, 
Well, yeah, that's that's, that's you're it. learning. It's, it's the entertainment <laughs> business. That's right. <laughs> right. So and when casting offices are always needing help, you know, free help. Go in there, you start seeing how casting offices work. You may be just, you know, filing headshots on or something, but you know, you talent agents hi, I'll come, I'd like to work free, you know, yeah. I'm in the eighth grade, I'd like to come after school, here's my work permit, my parent right. gives me permission, just do it. Yeah, because you know, that that's exactly right, because, you know, you're talking about filing headshots, I can't, I can't tell you how many times I've heard, you know, I was somewhere just filing headshots, and one of the guys was a photographer who needed a model, who right. asked me, could I model for him, he took my headshots, I got them for free, because I was doing this thing, and exactly. it's like, there you go, exactly. that's how you help each other, now he has headshots to show, right. and you have headshots to right. give. You want to be a photographer, carry a, some photographer's equipment for them for free. That's right. That's right. <laughs> That's right. And try to get a little credit. So if you're doing something for free, maybe you're not getting paid, yeah. but maybe you could get an associate producer credit. Or, something, or something somewhere. So you can get on, on IMDb and start, you start building. Building yourself a career. I didn't get a that. resume. <laughs> and then eventually you you can end up on Pepper's Jay's uh, talk show. Oh, and, uh, I got summer nah, talk show. Well. <laughs> That's right. You know, and fantastic, you know, Pepper. I'm so glad that you, uh, you know, uh, was able to, uh, you know, give us the time to come in and you know, share uh, the, these pearls of wisdom, because they have to get to know you, to be able to, or you know, or anybody in the industry who's been here so long, you know, to have those conversations, mm -hmm. but you know, to be able to, you know, freely give it, and that's how you are. You're, you're just, yeah. you're such a giver, and didn't give a chance. You know, we still got a couple minutes. Uh, talk about your Thanksgiving and how y every year. I now you told me now. Of course, you know it's open game. You, <laughs> you, you were such a um, uh, giving person. You open your home yeah, to bring well. you know individuals in to have a, a, a warm Thanksgiving. The four scariest things words that I hear in my life is when John Ferrari says, "I have an idea." <laughs> I see years <laughs> flash in front of my eyes. Of course. There are good ideas. I can't follow up on all of them. Yes. But he's really the impetus of giving a lot of it back. Yeah. And so after we have our family Thanksgiving on Thursday, yes. we almost always have what we call a homeless Thanksgiving on Sunday. And we just try to put a nice dinner together for people that don't have a place to go on Thanksgiving. They can be really homeless. Sometimes they're living in their car. Sometimes they just don't have a place to go yeah. for Thanksgiving. That's I, you know, it's not that big of a, you know. Yeah, Everybody should do something to yes. give back. And, nice. and, and I say to you, what charity are you working with? If it's a 503C charity, if it's a real charity, start contrib contributing. It's a good place to meet other good people. Yes. Is that charities, you know, part of what we are as Americans and, and as people across the world is uh, giving to people that are less fortunate. That's wonderful. Fantastic. That's right. Fantastic. You know, what, what, what a wonderful person you are. You know, and, thank uh, you know, and and you know, thank you for just being and sharing and not you know hoarding it. <laughs> you know you're, you're such a giver, and I think you're you're one of those lights that young people or anyone at any point in their life needs, especially in Hollywood. You you, you shine so bright. Thank you so much. You know, As well. do you. Oh, thanks again, Pepper, for coming in. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me, Gus. You bet. You bet. Hey, well, this is Gus Summers, and you've been listening to the In Show, and we had. In studio guest, Miss Pepper Jay. And of course, you can reach her at the actorsreporter.com and you can visit her there and see everything that she's doing. Of course, you can visit us at theinshow.com and you can see everything that we are going to do and have done and everything else. And of course, you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Of course, we'd love to connect there. And of course, ladies and gentlemen, Gus has left the building.